Hotel in Greenpoint, New York, and my special guest today is, please introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Deb Gerhardt of Spruce Lane Designs. And I first learned about you, actually, with these sweaters that we're wearing. Mm -hmm. I was interviewing Marionated Yarns, who, this is her yarn, is this also? Correct, this is her yarn, her yarn. Too. yep. And she was talking all about you, so it was the first time I'd heard of your designs. <laughs> and then, just weeks later, I met you at Mermaid's Pearl. Yep. And now here we are. Here we are. We're here. I can't believe I'm here for Stitch Up Brooklyn. I'm so excited. It's so cool. So tell me your fiber story. Oh, my fiber story. So I did the, you know, my mom knit. She taught me how to knit. And I did the let's knit the gar stitch scarf and the gar stitch hat that you seam and then, you know, you pull at the top. And God knows if I dig far enough, I probably could still find it. Oh, that would be so amazing. <laughs> and then I did fast forward to college. I did a little bit of knitting then. And then I really didn't pick it up again until I got married, which mm -hmm. is, oh my god, it's 25 years this year, which doesn't seem possible. Congratulations. Uh, thank you. I meet a lot of knitters who stay married. Like, you know, it's such a statistic. There's something to say about knitting. Yes. <laughs> yeah, like we just need to knit sometimes, honey. Yes, yes, dear. Thank you very much. <laughs> I need to escape to the yarn yeah. shop. Yes. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> um, so yeah, so I started just doing stuff then and I was never one to follow a pattern. I always mm -hmm. kind of would find something and then turn it to how I wanted it. Mm -hmm. So I kind of actually started doing sample knitting for a number of yarn companies and then a friend of mine said, oh, you know, I told them that you like to write and do things, would you want to do some tech editing? So I started actually doing technical editing mm -hmm. um, and from there I was like, well, I kind of like to design, mm -hmm. so here I am. I mean, I've only been at it maybe I guess it's been about two years now mm -hmm. at this point. I've got about 25, 26 designs out. Um, and I'm still, I guess, kind of finding the look that, you know, maybe certain designers have a certain look. Um, I love doing things with all different colors. I like whimsy and things. I like to have some, like adding a little detail like that mm -hmm. on the cups mm -hmm. or, you know, changing some things up. I have another sweater, which I just buried someplace, Sinistrom. Which, if you look here oh. on the cuffs. Oh, I love a color work sleeve. Yeah. And are they meant to be different? They are. So, the, the deal with this so, the, my mom taught me to knit. This, the backstory is that my mom is left handed. Mm -hmm. She went to Catholic school, they tied her hand behind her back. So, she no! became left handed. Became right handed. But I'm left handed. So, it was great that she taught me to knit because she knits continental, I knit continental, and I love it. So, yeah. Sinistrom is a derivative of left handed in Latin. So the cuff that's the different color is the left cuff. So when you do the sweater, I have in the pattern that, you know, if you're right-handed, you can actually do the cuff the other color, or you can match them, whatever you yeah. want to do, just go for it. I love that though. It's, I love when there's such meaning yeah. and secrets in a design. <laughs> that's so interesting. I love that. Have you heard of the rare stitch? No. So I learned this during my last Tell Me About Your Rhinebeck Sweater video, and I, I'm going to get this wrong, but the gist of it is that there's a knitter who has maybe an offspring that has a rare genetic disease of some sort, and so she always puts a rare stitch in. So maybe she'll oh, double wow. stitch over something. Maybe yeah. there would be one of these green stitches put in right here. It's just one rare stitch to just to signify that. Yeah, pay homage. Homage. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I love that you did that cuff. It reminds me of that. It sounds like you think maybe people can't recognize that this is one of your designs yet because you think they're kind of yeah. I'm kind of back and forth. I mean, I started doing a lot of shawls. Mm -hmm. um, I think so. My earlier. Yeah, ones. they're so stunning. They're so bright. I'm glad Thank we're going you. right into show and, and tell. And they still have tags on them because they well, have from to. a trunk show. Yeah. So I've kind of kept them that way. Um, How does a trunk show work with a designer? Are, are these for the yarns then? Or? So what normally happens for me is that these went to a trunk show in my LYS and because they don't carry a lot of the yarn, so when I did them I just put down the, the, the weight of the yarn and the yardage that they mm -hmm. need so they have an you know, idea of what they, they need to work with and what they need to get to mm -hmm. do the design. Um, so you can go to a designer's trunk show and look at the pieces? Yes. And then you go shopping at the local, at the local yarn, yarn shop. Because there's always plenty of yarn at the local yarn shop that you can use as an equivalent weight mm -hmm. that'll work in the design. Mm -hmm. you, know, you're not, you don't have to be married to just that yarn. Mm -hmm. You can always add in 
whatever you like. Because of course everybody has different colors yes. that they like. So they may think, no, I don't like those colors. They didn't work on me. I want to do something else. And they can do that. Yeah. So. And we were just discussing in an interview prior to this that then there's the knitter who says, I want this exact yeah. thing. <laughs> this exact yarn. So let's see this design. This is one of so your early shells. No, this is kind of probably mid-range. Actually, actually more recent, actually. I'm they, just thinking uh, about 26 designs in two years. That's more than a design a month. Woman, tw maybe two and a half years, somewhere You're around on there. Fire. Yeah, well, some of them were smaller. So this was Woolmice that came out with their birdies, mm. and so this is Bye Bye Birdie. They're all a little wrinkled, unfortunately. Bye Bye Birdie, yeah. one of my favorite movies. So actually, I just Bye Bye Birdie, so they pluralized it. So I didn't. Oh, I was afraid of trademark, just in case you want to infringe it. <laughs> I get it. Bye Bye Birdies. I think I just said Birdie. Yeah, I apologize. And then this is a smaller version because she has six. Um, eight and Whoa. ten skein sets. Oh, so, can we use our minis for this? Yeah, you could. We well, have so many minis that they are general minis because because those are this this runs at about 109 yards. They they run and okay. that's about use about around 90 yards for okay. that. So, but you could always just change one color after the next. Yeah. yeah. So and it's just it's a pretty. I always like to play around with construction too. Oh my gosh. So you so just it's... knit up this panel. Yeah. And you start, at, actually, you start at this end in the triangle and you just increase till you get to the width I Look you at how want. Cool that is. And then just knit it down. Oh and then because it's garter stitch, you just yeah. pick up in all the little nubs on this side and you yeah. just knit. And the thing I liked on this is as you, as you go towards the end of this, you're decreasing stitches. Yes. So, so you're not sitting and going, oh, I got 400 some odd yes. stitches on here. The now. shawls that grow. Yes. They're killer. I, I well, well, actually. Um, Do you have one that's I, killer? I have one that's killer. But look at this beautiful. <laughs> look at look at the combination of these yarns together and the graphic. I it's just love mosaic. that. I'm gonna add that on. What else? <laughs> And so this one is one this of the recent ones. This is yeah, this is Starlet Night. All right. This is Miss Babs. <gasps> Whoa. It's a big one. <laughs> that takes my wingspan. Whoa. You're such a beautiful knitter. Thank you. So yeah, I just like to switch things. You know, here oh I just this goodness. is the reverse. They're just You're the so opposite. professional. What is this one called? Uh Starlet Night. Starlit Night. Starlit Night. You said this one, bye bye birdies. Bye bye birdies. Starlit yeah. Night. Okay, good. So where do you get your inspiration? Like when when you sit down, sometimes tell me about the, the yarn moves me, and sometimes mm. something I see. Sometimes so, the yarn moves you. Yeah. yeah, sometimes the yarn moves me. If I see, so this one I knew I wanted to do something that was remind me of a wintry night mm. and just kind of the stars in the sky, and that's yeah. what I, I kind of went with that color scheme, and then I want something to kind of mimic the stars just set against yes. the sky. So I kind of did. That's that's what. That's where that one came from. Mm -hmm. um, other times I'll see a geometric pattern. I tend to, you know, we'll be driving someplace or walking someplace. Stop. Wait, 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 I gotta get a picture. Stop, honey, stop, I gotta. Okay, okay, all right, I'll slow down, okay. <laughs> you know? If I just go really slow. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> get your camera ready. Well, I mean, that's why I was looking at the floor out here in the box house, yeah. and it almost kind of reminds me of an Escher-like, just that quality of the, the, the three-dimensional. Like, oh, snap a picture of that. Yeah. You know, you never know. Um, and I notice you really like to play with texture and color. I do. I do. So where does the yarn come from? Do you reach out to dyers or? A lot of it I bought myself mm -hmm. originally. The wool mysa, I um, I used to set my alarm for two o'clock in the morning when they had their 8 a.m. <gasps> updates. Because <laughs> they're in Germany. I uh, love you. <laughs> and now, obviously, Claudia's store is much more well stocked, so it's easier to get in 24/7. Mm -hmm. But I would, my husband, he's like, "What are you doing?" It's like, "I'm gonna sleep downstairs on the couch tonight mm -hmm. because my alarm is set for 2 a.m. Mm -hmm. and then I'm on the computer hitting refresh mm -hmm. nonstop because I really want to get a skein of X Y Z from mm -hmm. Walmart." <laughs> That's me on eBay auctions. I will set an alarm. Yep. I'm glad. I'm, I'm glad I'm not the only I one. Love this. <laughs> Love the hunt. <laughs> That's why eBay works because I just want to win it. Then I don't. So then I start not caring, and I just want to win it. Yeah. It's addictive. I'm terrible. Okay. This one is. I actually got into a little bit of a, a gradient going with yeah. from Babs and whatnot. Yeah. So oh, so you're a big Miss Babs fan. Miss Babs has been wonderful to work with. Marion has been wonderful yeah. to work with. Um, Jen of Spiritual Spiritual Fiberworks. This is hers. Mm -hmm. Her yarn. This is Spiritual. Um, Mm -hmm. You know, it's funny starting out, I'm still kind of navigating the water, so I always feel mm. 
sometimes I feel kind of funny approaching somebody because I'm not a big name or anything and mm-hmm. say, hey, would you give me some yarn mm-hmm. to make it? Um, and then sometimes I think if I'm not exactly sure, the, I like the yarn, but I'm not exactly sure what direction I'm going in, I'll purchase it because it's a little less pressure for me that then if I don't do something or it doesn't work out to what I thought it was going to work out to be, then I just, you know, I have that little bit more freedom there. So that makes sense. I tend to do that. But I kind of got a bit of a gradient kick mm-hmm. and just different yes. constructions. Yes. Whoa! That's gradient geometry. Yeah, it is. And that's the sugar maple gradient I that she did for Rhinebeck. This is Miss Babs? Miss Babs, yeah. What? And so I did that. So it starts it's so out cool because from far yeah. away it almost looks like fuzzy. <laughs> Like a fuzzy, fuzzy yeah. like line, oh, I didn't think like out of that. focus. Yeah, it looks out of focus from far away because of the way you paired this right in here. Yeah. <gasps> that is so cool. It's like an eye trick, and then when you get closer, you can see the different yes. colors. Yes. Yeah. Oh my goodness! So the wool really, the colors really inspired the colors, me for this yeah, one. Inspired me for that one. The colors, and I, I really, I, I mean, sometimes as you ask, I'll be sitting there, I'll just be doodling. I'm like, I wonder if you construct something this way or that way, and your brain. How did does it, this brain work? I don't know. I did. I'm, I'm, my original job, I was an environmental engineer for 20 years. Talk about that. Were so, you knitting during that? <laughs> yeah, I was. In fact, I used to do the running joke in the office. One of the guys, the younger kids would go by and say, you yeah, know, only old ladies knit. I said, excuse me. I disagree with that comment. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I did. I knit. In fact, I had um, just stuff in the gloves and, and hats and mittens I'd have because I did field work and then my mom actually, I still have it to this day, she knit me, it was a lopy scrap set sweater that you know I wore in the field because it was always just so warm. If I'd be yeah. out in the winter time it would be just the, my go-to garment when I was out there. What does an environmental engineer do? So I did a lot of uh, soil, groundwater and air, I do cleanup work, I would design uh, groundwater treatment systems and go through and do soil remediation. I also did a little bit of hazmat, hazardous materials response. With the um, suits? With the suits, yeah, oh yeah. I think <laughs> I was all choked in <laughs> Did you find any crossover between your career and your knitting design? I think the math um, was a big crossover for me. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that helped me with the technical mm. end, and it helped me with the grading. Mm-hmm. I, it's, it's interesting though, I see going from the engineering and having to be so specific when I do the sweaters, and in fact this is something I'm looking to expand upon hopefully by September, um, I usually do them to a 54-56, I want to upgrade them to a 62-64 mm. inch for the size inclusivity, I think that's really important. Mm-hmm. Um, I always feel when I'm grading something though too, we're so many different body shapes, yes. and trying to get it to work for everybody, and I, you know, I, I hope people know that if you're doing, you know, you have one of my designs, you can't get it to work if you contact me. Mm. Please contact me. I'm happy to work with you mm-hmm. to try and get it. It's your sweater. You want to knit it so you can wear it. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, I even have a couple of test knitters that are doing some work for me now. Um, this one hasn't been released. This is Taunton. This is coming out next month, and this is in Babs It's probably released now when you're seeing this, just <laughs> so you know. <laughs> And so what are the test knitters saying? And so, well, no, they were, one of the girls came back to me, she said, oh, do you mind, I have kind of an odd body, body shape, do you, know, do you mind if I don't do the waist shaping? I said, no. She, and somebody said, oh, do you mind if I shorten the cuffs or I lengthen this? I said, no. I said, you're doing it for you to keep. Yeah. Well, that's, you know, I just, if you can give me, it's also good input for me to mm-hmm. learn if there's things I can change up or add to the design. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, and I think when you are more experienced in the knitting, I have to take some of these shawls off and get no, I was gonna say, <laughs> Sorry. No, it's my fault because I put them all on. <laughs> I did that, not you. When you knit many sweaters in a row or you know become more of a lifestyle knitter, you start learning about your own body and you yeah. start learning about what you like, what you don't like. For example, I often well, I've knit many Caitlin Hunter patterns, yeah. and she loves positive ease. She's like crazy about that, <laughs> and I don't. So I just yeah. have modified how I read and handle her patterns. Yeah. And because I've knit so many sweaters, I can do that. Yeah. So if you don't have that skill, don't be frustrated. You want no, help? I want to help. Let me know. I'm happy to help. I mean, that's part of designing is being able to reach out and have people reach out to you, and you reach out back to them and mm-hmm. make the design success for them too. Yeah. What else is in your pile? What else is in my pile? I can go back to the gradients. This one was gradient play, which is also a misbad. <laughs> I love the gradients though because sometimes I feel stuck about a gradient. 
And so I want to see them knit up. Yeah, and this is such a great use of it. So my, my only thing with the greens, which I love, is just all the ends to weave in. Yes. <laughs> that's the only thing. But that's so, why Netflix was invented. This is true. This is true. Just put on a good show and you tackle this. Well, one thing I do is I weave in as I go. So, I don't know if I had a post the other day, I was working on a, a garment and I put in, the, it was actually it was the shawl that I just did and I need to get it out. But anyways, and I said, I didn't take my own advice and weave in my own ends as I went. So I had this big pile of ends and I'm thinking, oh, time to weave. Mm -hmm. I should have done it when I was going. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. I said that to Kathleen Dames, she's a designer also. I, I said, so do you ever weave in as you go? And she said, that's only come back to bite me about three times. Because, you know, if we make mistakes. Yes. But yeah. I'm getting better at knowing if I'm on track or not. So I, yeah. with something like this, I would know I was on track pretty, you know, yeah. pretty soon. Sure. And then I would start weaving in. Yeah. For sure. Well, this one, so this is Gradients of Dew, and this one, I... Can I say it again? Gradients, my French is terrible. I apologize. A Dew. A Dew, uh-huh. And Whoa. this one I did weave in <gasps> as I went because there's a lot to Oh, them. my goodness. And here's a, there's a alternate color version. Whoa, look at how much fun these are. And you're such a good knitter. Thank These pieces you. are gorgeous. This one was my sample knitter, Cindy Rook of uh, Orange Smoothie Knits. She's Way one of my sample knitters. Way to go, one. Orange right. Smoothie Knits. Yeah. <laughs> Beautiful. Wow. Thank you. So that was these. my uh, gradients. I for feel a like while. you could make this without gradient too. Like I feel like oh, you could go crazy yeah. with oh, your definitely. Indie dye yarn. You could do scraptastic, you know, shawl with all yeah. the different colors in there. I, mean, yeah. I love the graphic. Na I really love the graphic nature of these, but I also mm. love the idea of repurposing it with some indie dyed yarns you have. Yeah. You know, or stash busters. Oh yeah. Beautiful. Okay, this so, one. so this one is cherry cordial, which <gasps> cherry this is cordial. one of my earlier ones. Of course, it came off on. It was released right around Valentine's Day. Oh, look at that. It's beautiful. another Miss Babs. I have not been able to get on the Miss Babs train, so I love seeing all of these samples yeah. because I feel overwhelmed by Miss Babs' booth because there's so I, many yeah. people, <laughs> and I never know what I'm looking at or what I should grab for. And I didn't realize she had so many like she has solids. A lot. Yeah, yeah, she does. Yeah, and Which I can tell this base is really going to hold up well. It does. It does. The wool mice says, Mary, so we don't want to talk about bases. Yeah. So this sweater that you have on. It's under here. That that poor sweater, that started out as, I started as one design. I didn't like the way it looked in the DK weight. I pulled it out. I knit it up into a shawl that became so heavy that my friend was calling it the shlanket. <laughs> so then I ripped it all out. And I re knit it into that. So really? that thing's been knit up three times. This yarn? Yeah, yarn. Those those original skates. That's crazy. So her base is where, yeah, you can't even tell. Yeah. And I, I mean, I pulled it, it was all crimped, more crimped than my hair is. Um, and it was, you know, I didn't even go in and um, I didn't like, even like wet it. Yeah. To do, I just went, you just went back it. up again. Yeah. yeah, I was at a, I was in a, at an event with a yarn shop owner the other day. Someone was frogging. And she said, let the yarn rest, which I think is a very legitimate tip. Yeah. But I love that you told that story. Now, this is a kit from Mary and the Yarns of this sweater. Isn't it beautiful? It has my colors in there. It's a little bit glary, but I think you can see. So this yarn is, is this DK? This is her DK. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. And then her gradients. There and look who's on the back. <laughs> there she is. <laughs> So do you do all your own modeling for your designs? So far. Yeah. Um, unless I knit something up that doesn't fit me and then I go, yeah, <laughs> I yeah. borrow my friend's daughter. I eventually would love to. I think it's one of the things that I'm still learning. I'd love to really even work with a professional photographer mm -hmm. and get a variety of models. I just haven't hit that yeah, you're not there yet. stance yet. So It's not in the budget. Um, exactly. Can we talk about your hair? Yeah, <laughs> sure. You can talk about Mop. <laughs> Let's talk about letting it go gray. <laughs> Let's Couple talk about it because it's such a nice color. It's got this little. Thank you. It's starting to go there. That well, so silver. it's starting to go there, and I actually occasionally I'll do a um, a demi on What's it. that? Just the demi permanent oh, color on oh, it. Oh, so it like just fades little, out. Just the fades out. So I had this on maybe maybe about two weeks ago, mm -hmm. and it'll eventually all wash out, and you'll see all the rest of it. It's really. I'm so trying to great. decide how to handle it. 
It's it, it depends on how you like it and yeah. how you and how it looks. I mean, I have one friend who she doesn't like her grays at all, no. so she's constantly coloring mine. I don't. There, it, it's not all gray yeah. for me. It's kind of spotty. I feel so. like it's coming in so nicely. Thank Are you. Are you happy with yeah, it? Yeah, I am. I am. Yeah, I mine. I would be happier if they weren't so like they have a totally different texture. Yes, they do. <laughs> so I would be like, guys, I don't mind you being here yeah. as long as you can just kind of like stay yeah. smooth with everyone else. Yeah, occasionally I'll be like, did somebody put Brillo in my hair? Because Brillo. my hair's already thick as it is mm -hmm. and then like the grays come in even. They have a different texture. They have a different texture and they're yeah. just Yeah. Right, you know? I'm like, Okay. Yeah. I have a friend who has gone gray and she started really early. So she's been someone I've, you know, really looked looked up to and yeah. looked to and cuz I'm still on the fence of what I want to do and so I have all these Instagram accounts I follow with women who are going gray and so yours is beautiful. Thank so. you. Thanks for letting me talk about that. Silver disobedience one of them. Maybe. She, yeah, yeah, maybe. Her, yeah. Okay, what else do you have in the real Just today? side note. Other so, things we knitters care about, you know. Here's an interesting so this is kind of funny. This is a hat I did uh, amidst the winter. And if you look at this stitch pattern. Yeah. <gasps> oh, is this your swatch for this sweater? Kind of sort of. <laughs> so, I mean, it was funny because I did that stitch pattern and then I'm going, oh, I, if I work increases in there and increase that uh -huh. up, that would be a really cool yoke. So this is amidst winter? Amidst the winter. Amidst the winter. So this yeah. is the companion piece. Yeah, basically, even though it was done way before the sweater. I love that. Yeah. But aren't hats swatches? Yeah, kind yeah. of. At Church Mouse Yarn on Bainbridge Island, they have a stack of berets in this cabinet, and it's all of the Brooklyn Tweed yarns. Oh. So instead of swatches, the, it's berets. That's great. It's such a fun idea because then you can actually even try it on. Well, there was one Raveler who actually, she bought the pattern for once again mm -hmm. and she has posted she knit a hat to test her gauge. Mm -hmm. So she's got this great little hat, but yeah. she did the wider, you know, yeah. more of the honeycomb. But and yeah. I am told this has cabling in three colors. So, Don't well, this one? what I did was after I, I did that and that gradient is so, it's, you know, it's monotone, it just mm -hmm. progresses mm -hmm. easily. Um, I found that when you go, if somebody's using a gradient like the racing silks that, mm -hmm. that uh, Marion had brought that day, mm -hmm. when you got down to here, you could see the new color here, and there was just a line. Mm. So I said, well, you know what, let me rewrite it. So I added another version to the pattern, mm. basically. So for, I think it's four rounds total, okay. you do carry three colors at once okay. to be able to just not have that little line okay. that forms. When you have the pattern out, Take note of that. That will make sense if you're reading the yeah. pattern. Okay. So there's, but but there's two. You'll see because there's there's the pattern for just that one. Mm -hmm. Then there's a pattern for the separate colors, and then there's a pattern for Sheldon's sweater okay. because we had knit Sheldon a sweater. Okay, who's Sheldon? Sheldon. Sheldon is the sheep that Marion has. It's oh, her mascot. That's right. Marion needed you on her logo. Yes. Love so it. So he had matching sweater. So this is actually a marinated. This oh, is wow. Uh, wicked tulips. Look at the tulips. I see them. But can you see them? Do you see the tulips? You can really see it in the yellow. <gasps> and wow! The and then the big tulips. <gasps> what? <laughs> that is so beautiful. So this is this is your pattern. That's my pattern. So Marion Marion actually um, dyed up this gradient set, and then we did a play on Gosh. STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math. Love. And we named all the colors after women. And so, in science, and in technology. science and technology, engineering, and math. I love this. Yeah. And what a fun spring project. Yeah, yeah we're, I was hoping to get that a little sooner to photograph it with all the tulips, but I didn't quite get there. Oh, yeah, but because they come out in like <laughs> they come out March. And they were gone in like, well, they came out in May this year, but literally within Maybe. a week and a half, boom, gone. gone. They were gone. Oh, this so. is so beautiful. Yeah, so oh, look at this. Thank you. And do you just love working with Marion? She's been great. She's, she's been she's wonderful. So fun. She's so much fun. She's great color sense. I love the richness yes. and the vibrancy of her colors and her yarn. How does she do it? She just, well, and she's also, she's very, she's detailed and she very, very consistent. Yeah. She seems to, I mean, she's like I, a machine. This, so this sweater, I didn't alternate skeins. Amazing. I just, I was like, all right. I, I, mean, I put them out in the sun, I looked at them, like, they, they look pretty good. Yeah. 
there you went. There was no problem. This okay. was, um, I did the New York National mm. Parks for Indian Tangled. Oh, nice. And I think I got it backwards. <laughs> and that's uh, Sunrise Over Bryce, and that was with Into the World. Oh, that's beautiful. Beautiful. And this guy was the ephemera shawl that was in Pom Pom issue 23. Oh, you were in Pom Pom! Well, now, is that the only time you've been in Pompano? It's the only time I've ever submitted for anything. And you made it in! <laughs> I know. How so now feel? I haven't submitted since that, so I'm like, did I jinx myself? I, I've been... <laughs> I know I How did that feel? It was, I couldn't believe it. I was just... What's that Guy Fieri thing? Shut the front door! Shut the front, Shut door! The front door! That was me. I'm going, what? Look at, really? Look at this graphic. What was the theme for that uh, issue? Uh, it was Winter Nights. Okay, and, Winter Nights. Yeah, and so they actually, this is one I had Rena and Malabrigo. They did it in uh, in Hedgehog, and it's mm. a really a pale pink and then a dark, moody uh, navy with it. Mm. So that's actually that sample is on its way back to me at some point. Yeah, because so, they hold on to them. Yeah. So I've that. done that one. And then this is the oh, Sinistrom companion. sweater. This was the Cine Mini. Okay, Cine Mini! <laughs> that was my Rhinebeck outfit last year. Love. Oh, I love that. This is an earlier one. This was a one skin. Is this Miss Babs? Yeah, was I was going to say, yeah. this screams Miss Babs to Yes. Me. This is what I think of when I think of Miss Babs. I think that's the back. I think yeah, there Here's we the go. front. I think. Whoa! Beware, because I don't have my reading glasses on, so it could be the back. You might have it right. They look time. very, They're very similar. similar. So that's singular sensation. So you can use one skein of yeah. Yes, one skein of yeah. 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 That is trace. So this I wanted to play around with. You know when you buy two variegateds and they don't exactly match. Yes. It oh yeah. Different. So this actually has two variegateds and one semi-solid. So these are basically the same colorway, yeah. but you can see there's more red intensity here oh, and then yes. there's more orange here. So I want to do something that kind of tied it together. Mm -hmm. So I did that. I actually have another version which I didn't bring that's um, it's a gold, two variegated golds, and then has a purple as a semi-solid oh, cool. in it. And then I always like to play. I love the different way the stitches evolve yeah, amongst different patterns. Now, is this considered lace work then? This? I guess it's considered lace work. You're only using, you're only doing the lace work on the right side though. I think sometimes mm -hmm. when I really think of true lace work, you're working manipulating those stitches on both the right side and the wrong side rows. Yeah. So this is great for somebody who wants to do a little bit of lace, but doesn't really want to get into the full commitment. You know, commitment. <laughs> yeah. The full now, commitment. <laughs> would you still use stitch markers for this, for the section? You can. I didn't, but okay. I, some people, I know they feel, you know, so I try, I chart and then I also write out. Nice. So they have both. Um, and you can always, you know, for each repeat, some people do like to put in the stitch markers. Be mindful that because this is an asymmetric triangle, it's, you're going to be increasing and deep, so you're going right. to be pulling some stitch markers over and mm -hmm. some stitch markers off as you go along. Yeah, that's what but, I was thinking yeah. in my mind, and you found the words that I was thinking. <laughs> well, this is so amazing. So what's next for you? Let's see that so, one. This is Twisted Smoke. Let's start at the very beginning. There it is. Oh, I love good that. Place to start. And that's still gradients. Yes, yeah, that oh, was wow. some that was Spiritual Fiberworks, and that one I didn't Look alternate it, skeins. That's I wanted cool, to though. do that. I did it on purpose. I don't know that everybody loves it, but I thought it was kind of neat. Yeah, because the pooling. Yeah, I just thought it was interesting to see how it played out as you knit it up. You know, mine really pool. I've had a sweater that really pooled like that, and I alternated anyway. So yeah. it just depends on what it does. What the yarn's gonna do. Yeah. So what's next for what's you? Next? So I have that sweater coming up for Babs. Mm -hmm. I have another sweater I'm working on with Marion. Fun. I have a gradient that Babs dyed up for me for a shawl that I'm working on. I have a sweater for Jillian Kittles. Oh my goodness. I have quite a bit. <laughs> Are you working full time still, or this is your no? Gig? I so when I when I was working full time, I was my hours were long. I was usually 70, 60, 70, 80 hours a week Whoa. because I was on response. I worked for the major petroleum companies, and I worked for Amtrak, mm -hmm. um, a couple of other places for response. I'm on twenty four seven, and when I had my son, I was going. I, I want to see my child, so yeah. I left. Yeah, um, I did some part time consulting on a contract basis, mm -hmm. and then the two people who I was working for they were transferred down to Houston, so mm -hmm. that kind of ended. Because you're in Rhode Island. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I just said, oh, let's try the knitting and see. And 
bit by bit. Yeah. It's been it's been a learning experience, and yeah. I mean, I just feel and I apologize to anybody if you know me and I've met you. I have to admit, I remember faces. I'm terrible with names, yeah. and I apologize. <laughs> I just for some reason I'm like, oh, I know you, but I can't remember. Yeah, name. yeah, <laughs> it's hard. Well, do you think this is going to be your long-term next chapter, or what do you, where do you see I your hope business going? So. Yeah. I mean, I'd, I'd like to grow it some more. I'd, I'd like to get to a point where I can pick up. Um, I have one sample knitter now who's fabulous. I don't even have to knit the entire. I can just knit a swatch wow. and send her a sketch, and she'll knit it. So if I could get comment um, below. I'm, yeah, yeah. I mean, I've got all sorts of you know ideas up here, but it's trying to get the time to get them all yeah. knit up. Yeah. Um, so I'd really like to get, right now I'm doing a pattern or two a month, I'd like to get more prolific and get some more stuff out there. Um, I'd also like to do more teaching. I did a little yeah. bit of teaching here and there. I enjoy it. The only thing that's odd for me is it because I knit Continental and mm. most people knit English. They throw. Yeah. They throw. Um, you know, I don't know. And my feeling is there's really no wrong way to knit. Right. As long as you're getting engaged and you're happy with what you're getting, you know, you could be knitting with your toes for yeah. all I care as long as it works. Yeah. You know? I saw someone crocheting <laughs> like they were knitting. So she put the hook in and she'd wrap the yarn. It oh, was wow. so great. Never That's seen that sweet. before. And we were all like, no, there's an easier way to do that. But it worked for her. So yeah. she just wrapped that yarn around her hook. We have a friend of mine, um, his wife is from Austria, and she knits, she won't use circular, she mm. always uses straight needles, mm. and she puts one, she anchors it under her arm, and she just, I don't know how she does it, the needle just sits there, and she just goes. Yeah, I it's love It's amazing that. to watch. Now, do you have a website, or where can we find you? You can find me um, on Instagram, it's Bruce Lane Designs, mm -hmm. and on Facebook, it's Bruce Lane Designs, and on Ravelry at, guess what, Spruce Lane Designs. <laughs> and why did you choose Spruce Lane? So we actually have a little cabin up in Maine on Spruce Lane. And I used to go up there and we'd be knitting quite a bit. So that's where I kind of sort of came up with that. Mm -hmm. um, that's kind of my escape place I when, I have, when I have the chance. <laughs> yeah. And knitting is our escape, you know. Not everyone is lucky enough to have that. So yes. that's why, that's how knitting functions for us yeah. is we just... Kind of escape with all the chaos going on and focus on that. Yeah, and it's I definitely. That. And I've seen. I mean, it got me through when when my dad was sick and we spent a lot of time in the hospital. Mm -hmm. We were constantly, you know, the knitting needles were there. Mm -hmm. um, and then even after he passed, it was kind of a, I don't know. It was a, a time for me to just kind of sit with my thoughts mm -hmm. and do my knitting and just kind of back off from all the emotions that were just kind of, they've been there yeah. for, you know, so. Well, the stages of grief are real, yeah. and knitting can really help you through some of those. Mm -hmm. I was interviewing someone recently whose dad had passed, and she said having the knitting there was sort of a conduit for, for everyone in the room. So it's so hard to talk about, yeah. but it was easy to talk about the knitting. Yeah. And that's how, yep. you know, she kind of got through that, which was really wonderful of her to share. Now, if you could only do one thing, like, if you had to choose between designing and knitting, you could only do one. Which one would you do? Or is that an impossible question to answer? <laughs> That's like, which comes first, a chicken or the I egg? Um, well, because you did say that you modified a lot of patterns. Uh, yeah, so maybe really... you would cheat and say knitting. <laughs> do they feel different when you're doing them? Like, when I'm reading music and studying a language, my brain feels different about both. Versus when I'm doing math, versus when I'm doing English. Does your brain go to the same place when you're designing versus just knitting? I think, for, no. Um, same place. Same place, but somewhat different. So yeah. I play piano too. Yeah. So I, same thing. I find the piano mindset, if I'm learning a piece, can be likened to the designing. Okay. Whereas actually when I've got the piece polished and I'm playing it, can be likened to the knitting portion. I love that, that analogy. Makes sense. It totally does. Yeah. It totally makes sense because I could say the same thing when I'm learning, you know, a new piece. It's in my, you know, learning phase, like this weird groove. And then once I know it, I can just memorize it and yeah. spit it out. It's a different groove. So, oh, that's good. And then one of the ways I tend to design, I tend to, I have an idea, because um, my Rhode Island accent, idea, did you hear that? Idea. Uh, idea. <laughs> and I will swatch. And then what I tend to do once I've got gauge, I like to write it out as much as I can mm -hmm. and chart out. So then I can actually sit there 
and knit mm -hmm. from, from your the own pattern that I've done. So it gives me like, you know, input as to what, well, maybe I'm going to change that. Mm -hmm. Or maybe, and I mean, there's been times as, you know, as I said, I ripped out with this. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I get it all done and I get that and I go, I really don't like that. <laughs> so weird. Yeah, well, you wrote it. So yeah, you exactly. It. Only you to blame. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, I just love seeing all of these samples and talking to you about your process. I'm so glad we met in Rhode Island. Thank it was meant you, to be. Here. And I'm so glad you're here for Stitch Up Brooklyn. I cannot wait. We're gonna have such a fun so day tomorrow. Excited. So underneath this video, I will link to everything we talked about. Okay. And uh, it sounds like she would love for you to reach out if you have questions. Yes, please come and visit. Yeah, you can reach out. And if you're ever in Rhode Island, bug me. Yeah. Take you on to the local yarn shop. Donuts, LYSs, donuts, all the frozen things. lemonade. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, all these things. the beaches. The beaches are nice to be here at this time of the year. <laughs> yeah, it's beautiful there. So I've loved every time I've gone to visit. So. Thank you so much for bringing Thank a little you. more on to us. Thank you so much. See ya. Bye. Bye. <laughs>